back to the Study with Ant podcast. Thank you for tuning in this week. So uh, this week, we're going to try to do this monthly, take at least one Bible story and just kind of talk a little bit about that story and what we can learn from it. Now, the story that I've picked for this week uh, has some it's a very just a very good story. Uh, it's a fun one to teach if you're teaching kids, and it's also one that has uh, some sentimental value for me, because when I spent some time in West Africa, this was the story that um, a man named Alfred used to teach me Creo. No, it's not Creole, but Creo, K-R-I-O, and so he used this to help me understand the words, the, um, be able to teach the story. I think this is one of the first stories I taught. And I taught, taught it a few times just because I, I got it down really, really well in Creo. So, so you can understand a little bit about what I learned and how my brain had to think. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of this in Creo. So open your Bible to Luke, uh, John chapter 11. You'll be able to see it and you can probably pick out a few words, but this is a little bit of that so you can hear. So now we'll start with verse 1. Now, one man be sick, he named Lazarus, way day na Bethany, the town where Mary and his sister Martha. Now, the Mary one he be bless the Lord with oil, and wipe in foot with her air. Where he brother Lazarus be sick. So for that, in sister den, sin to Ram. Say, Lord, the one way you be like, he sick. Which is eerie, he say, this sickness no for die, but for give glory to God, that God in Pekin go get glorified for that. Now Jesus like Mary and his sister and Lazarus, we been den ear say he done sick, he stay two days still at the same place, who say he be day. Then after that he say to his disciples then, Una let we go now Judea again. In disciples then say to him, Master, the Jews didn't be want for stone you, and go there again? Jesus answered, Not the twelve hours day have the day? If any man walk not the day, he no go walk he foot, because the day see the light of the world. But if man walks a night, he go walk he foot, because light no day inside him. Now this thing he say, after that he say to them, We paddy Lazarus, they, da, they sleep. But he go so that he go wake him, come from sleep. Then his disciples say, Lord, if he they sleep, he they do fine. Albeit Jesus be they talk about he die, one. But been, but de been they think, say he, been they talk, but he sleep. Alright, so I haven't read that in a very long time, so I'm a little bit rusty on that, as you can see. But that's kind of the idea, just learning some different words. Like, petty is a, a, a word from... I believe it comes from Portuguese, is when they use petty for friend. Um, we have, you know, bucky foot, you know, hit his foot. Um, so hopefully that was interesting for you, hearing a little bit of, of uh, John chapter 11 in a different language. But that's how I learned. Um, Alfred would write it out, then he'd have me read it, he'd have me practice it. And then I would, um, at the end I taught it a few times, so just fun. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Now, there's a lot of questions that can be you know, asked about Luke. I keep wanting to say Luke. My apologies. John chapter 11. And so in case you're not familiar completely with the story, let me revisit it really quickly. So there are three siblings, Mar- Martha, Mary, and their brother Lazarus. Jesus has spent time with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus in the past. There's another story that talks about them, which we'll talk about that briefly. But Lazarus has gotten sick. And Mary and Martha, they know Jesus does miracles. They know he heals people. And so they send to Jesus to ask him to come. Say, hey, um, you know, well, where's the verse? Actually, they don't send necessarily for him to come. I think it's an implied understood. But they say, Lord, behold, him whom thou lovest is sick. They, they send in and trying to get Jesus' compassion, saying, hey, Lord, Lazarus, the one you love, he is sick. Uh, but Jesus doesn't go. In fact, he waits several days before going. And his disciples are like, well, Lord, the people in that area, they want to kill you. Why are you going back? But he does it because it's going to bring glory to God. 
maybe dangerous, yes, but it's going to bring glory to God. Now, both Martha and Mary, they both question Jesus on why Jesus doesn't, didn't come sooner. Like, it's been four days. By the time Jesus gets there, I believe, um, let me see where I can find it. Yeah, he's been dead four days by the time Jesus comes. Travel was much slower in those days. So once Jesus did decide to leave, it took some time to get there. And so Lazarus is is now passed away. He's dead. Now, the book of John, he tends to shed light on stories that other gospels leave out. This is one of those stories. The story of Lazarus is one of the events um, that's only recorded in John. Now, I was, I was reading, I was curious, you know, why is this? What's a possible reason for this? And we don't know exactly for sure why John chose to record it and the others didn't. But a possible reason for this is related to John chapter 12, verse 10, that talks about how the leaders uh, of the area wanted to actually kill Lazarus. Um, After he was resurrected, they wanted to kill him. So it is conjectured that the other gospels omit this story because Lazarus was still alive at their writing. Thus, they did not want to bring more attention to Lazarus. While on the other hand, John's gospel was focused more towards an audience outside of Israel, so there was less fear of harm to Lazarus. But this is just a speculative thought. We don't have clear, decisive reasoning behind that. We don't have a clear scripture to back that up, but it is a possibility. Now, Mary and Martha are often compared using the passage from... A little bit from Luke. Yeah, that's probably why I keep wanting to say Luke. From Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 38 through 42. Get it right? Where Jesus has come to visit, and Martha is busy serving, taking care of things, and Mary is just sitting at Jesus' feet. And Martha kind of gets upset and says, You ask, you will, you um, Lord, does not, does thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. So Mary is, Martha is complaining to Jesus that her sister has left her to do everything. And Jesus' reply is, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. I think in this we can see priorities. Many times we think that being busy serving, doing, is that is necessary. It's needed. We need to do it. But we see Jesus here specifying the one thing that is needful. And that is what Mary has chosen, to sit at the feet of Jesus, to listen to Jesus. Uh, and that's one of the first things we can learn from these two women, is that uh, one was very quick about serving, wanting to, to serve, make sure everyone was comfortable, but also got a little little upset when she had to do it all by herself and no one was helping her. I've been there. You've, you've probably, if you're a woman, and you've, you've been in that situation before. But sometimes we need to be like Mary and step back and be like, hmm, all this busy, all this making food, all this cleaning, eh, it's just going to get dirty again. But this time I can sit and maybe study God's word, maybe go to a special church service, um, go to a revival meeting, missions conference, that is needful. That is needful. Having a perfectly pristine house is not needful. That is uh, definitely helpful, definitely makes us feel better, but it is not what is needful. That one thing, to sit at the feet of Jesus, to learn from God's word, that's the part that is needful. So we see the the character of these two women. Now back in John, we see that Martha is the first one to speak to Jesus. And we see this in verses 20 through about 22 is her initial um, initial re- uh, interaction with Jesus. And so at first she polite, politely kind of rebukes him for not coming sooner. It's like, hey, Lord, we sent for you and you didn't come. But in in verse 22 is interesting because it says... But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. And I find this interesting because it makes me wonder if Martha had heard of previous times. Jesus raised the dead. 
you know, example of the widow of Nain's son, the the two different uh, two different instances a boy a son was raised uh, back to life, a girl was raised back to life. But her her question seems to to her statement seems to go that way. But in verse twenty four, we then see her kind of shift uh, because Jesus as you know, says to her in verse twenty three, "Thy brother shall rise again." Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So she believes in the resurrection, end of time, he'll rise again. Um, but it appears she believed Jesus could have raised her son, could have uh, healed her brother, not her son, could have raised her brother and, and helped him if Jesus had come sooner. But now there's no hope. That's what it seems to be, that now there is no hope. And if you look at verse 39, Jesus says, Take away the stone. And Martha, she quickly says, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. So we, we see that, you know, while he was sick, yes, she believed Jesus could heal him. But now, you know, it's been four days. This is, I think, uh, other people who, who died, um from what we can read, it was all very quickly afterwards. Um, like with the, the, the little girl um, who passed away, that uh, Jairus, Jairus' da- daughter. That that happened very quickly. Um, you know, she passed away. Uh, let's, let's, let me back up. <clears throat> so Jairus came to Jesus. As they're headed to Jairus' home, servants came out and said, you know, don't bother the master. He's she's She's gone. And then there's weeping and wailing and people start mocking Jesus. But Jesus walks in and she raises her back to life. So this is very quick. This is four days Lazarus has laid in the grave. And so it's kind of thought that there's no hope that he can't rise again. Before we read the rest of the story, let's go back to Mary for a second see her reaction. Um, she Mar- Martha went and told... Mary, she says, uh, she did it secretly. She said, the master is come and calleth for thee. Now, I don't actually see that anywhere that, that maybe it was just implied, but there's, there's not actually a verse where Jesus says, hey, and go and send Mary out to me. We don't see that, but Martha sends Mary to Jesus. So uh, Mary comes out and, and she goes and comes to Jesus. She saw him. She fell down at his feet, and, and says, basically verbatim, what her brother or what her sister said: "Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died." And all these other Jews had followed her out, thinking she was going to go to the grave to cry. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled, and said, "Where have ye laid him?" They said unto him, "Lord, come and see." And then the shortest, but also a very very important verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Jesus is God in a body of flesh. We've seen, if you've read through the Bible, you've seen Jesus asleep, tired, hungry, asking for a drink. And now we see the humanity of of God, the ultimate humanity of weeping, sorrow over his friend. Even though he knew what he was going to do. He knew he was going to raise Lazarus back to life. But yet, he wept. The Jews around said, Behold, how he loved him. Jesus got to feel that same feeling of loss that if you've lost anyone in in your life due to what's happening recently or just through illness or accidents, you know, we read about the fact that you know Jesus felt what we felt, and that's what this verse is showing: is Jesus felt that sorrow because he wept. He wept for Lazarus. Now, moving on, Jesus he asks for the stone to be rolled away. Martha's like, hey, uh, Lord, no, 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 we shouldn't do that. But he insists, and then he he calls out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead 
came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, and to them, loose him, and let him go. In the same few moments, all those around were so sorrowful, yet in a moment there was rejoicing. Think about heaven. You know, I, I don't know how that works exactly. Like, at what point do or all the tears be wiped away and there'll be no more sorrow? But can you can you imagine that? Just just on this earth, every day there's things we deal with that bring us sorrow or pain, frustration. But one day, if we've trusted Christ as our Savior, those tears will be wiped away. That sorrow will be gone. And we'll get to spend eternity with our Savior, who felt what we felt. Pain, sorrow, hunger, tiredness, weariness. There's so much we can learn from this story. This wasn't the the direction I was planning on on taking this this when when I began. But, you know, seeing what Jesus did, he, in a moment, all those people who were around, Mary, Martha, all the Jews who were there, He brought rejoicing. But notice, but notice, verses 45 and 46, Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. This miracle, this sudden from sorrow to joy, from death to life, they believed. And some of them went their way to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. And then the next verse. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Um, yeah. And it's so sad because even even today, um, you show these, these scripture passages to someone. And to me, it's just like, it's, you know, how amazing we can see that, that death to life from from sorrow to joy. And yet so many people are blinded. These Pharisees are people who read the scriptures more than most of the common people in, in, in Israel. Uh, the, you, the people in Israel would hear it, but most of them weren't able to read it. But these Pharisees could. They could read the prophecies. They could read the Psalms. And yet they didn't believe. So very sad. So very sad. So well, hopefully you enjoyed a kind of a rambly talk about the the story of Lazarus. Hopefully something kind of made a point, to, uh, point uh, stuck out to you. And uh, hopefully you didn't mind my reading in a, another language. I did very badly at that. need to practice. But uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, what is your favorite Bible story? What Which one makes an impact on you? Whether it's because um, it's maybe the one you heard when you chose to receive Christ as Savior, one that has as a reminder to you of something in life. Uh, just I'd, I'd be thrilled to hear what that is. So you can send me an email at the study at study with the ant uh, at aol.com I think it is. It, the link will be in the um, description or you can message me on Instagram and tell me about it. I'd love to hear about it. So thanks for listening and tune in next week for the next study with the ant podcast. Bye.